happy Friday indeed, and it's looking, it's looking like it could be a very good Friday. Hello everyone, I'm here, it's Friday, it's Figure Friday. Now I will admit, right off the bat, I am exhausted. I think I got four hours of sleep last night. Uh, it's been a very busy time, a little stressful, lots of lots of things going on, but I'm here. I'm excited to be here with you all. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, I was up a little bit late, watching watching some interesting YouTube things. And uh, now actually, to be honest, uh, I was working on something kind of interesting last night. Uh, one of my many projects. If any of you have, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so for any of you who are in business for yourselves or have a product that you work on or anything like that, there's an interesting website called HARO, H-A-R-O, and it stands for Help a Reporter Out. And essentially what it is, is you know when you go and you read, you read like a listicle somewhere and the listicle will have... It's like the, you know, the top 10 hacks for whatever garbage. And like you'll read through it and there'll be, there'll be like little quotes from experts on the subject. So Harrow is how these journalists or writers get those expert quotes. And it's kind of a fascinating system, but essentially you sign up for Harrow either as a journalist or as an expert. And if you're an expert, you have to have Basically, you just have to have like a company that you're sort of related to just to have an entry. And then you get newsletters three times a day, every day. So it's kind of a lot to troll through. But um, it's just people looking for sources and experts for art articles of every single kind that you could possibly imagine. And there's different sections for like education, uh, technology, lifestyle, travel, medicine, like you name it. And again, they send out three emails every single day. And well, I mean, but that, that, and that's the thing though, like everybody's an expert on something. Um, so anyway, uh, reporters or journalists will ask for, hey, I need help on this subject. And then you, you as an expert or somebody who knows something about it can write back and say, hey, I know something about that. And then see if they want it. Yeah, exactly. Source, sources and experts. Um, yeah, I know. I keep saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, so anyway, when I when my book was about to come out, one of the things that my the publicist at my publisher told everybody is sign up for this thing. So in case there's anything related to your book content, um, then you can you know potentially get some exposure somewhere. So I periodically write back to these things. Um, there's not a lot. Not a lot of people looking for for um, information on baby name stuff, but it does pop up every once in a while. So anyway, there was like a really good prompt that I found yesterday, and so I was conversing with this this writer at some website, um, and then I was writing this very long thing for her last night. Uh, she got it this morning. She loved it, so hopefully some of my content will be on a popular ladies website coming up and I can use that for promotion and stuff like that. So anyway, yeah, if you, if you're in a position where again, like if, if you have a company or if you have a product or something that you're related to, Harrow is a very interesting website. And yes, sometimes they are looking for Amish erotica and, and things like that. So another point for Amish erotica. Uh, okay. I wanted to do a quick recap of a couple things from this week and then we'll look at some models and stuff. And yes, we have the news on in the other room. It was good news that we woke up to, uh, although it wasn't changed much from when I went to bed a few hours ago. But it is positive, so we're happy about that. Oh, and then I have this other whole crazy thing going on that I can't really talk about, but maybe one day. Um, so doing some emails about that. I'm sure on Thursday. You know, it it could be. I'm not I'm not ruling it out. Okay, so on Wednesday we talked about colors. Yeah, it's uh the numbers are all moving in the right direction, let's put it that way. Not the right direction, but the right direction. Uh so on Wednesday we talked about color schemes 
and my sadly nearly entirely gray Space Marines army. And we also were talking about color wheel theory and all that kind of stuff. And it was so funny because later, was it later that night, um, we have a house full of toys, my toys, kids' toys, you name it. So I was playing with Benjamin and Max comes in with a toy that I haven't seen in years. I swear to God, I don't know where he found it, but it's a little fake toy camera. It was a keychain once upon a time. My brother used to collect keychains. So he comes in with this camera and he's like pretend taking pictures of things. And I look at it and I realize, and and again, my color is a little off, but it's pink with, with neon lime green accents. And I was like, holy crap, that's exactly what we were talking about with color theory because on the opposite ends of the color wheel are pink and this bright lime green. I was like, huh, well, I guess that kind of does work. And it's garish and you, and I recognize that it's garish, but like it, my eye doesn't have a, you know, a problem reading it. So I thought that was kind of interesting that like the exact colors we were talking about showed up on this thing. And there's even orange, which I was talking about potentially being an accent color on on my army. So I don't know. Maybe I'll, when I do the testing, maybe I will try to do some kind of a lime green in there. So yeah, I thought that was interesting that that came up. Um, I also found the book that I was talking about. So this, and it is a very large book, but this is the Insignium Astartes, the uniforms and regalia of the Space Marines. When did this book come out? Does it have... So this book is neat. It's it. They made it look really fancy. 2002... So yeah, basically it's for it's for lore, it's for deciding how you want your armies to look. But yeah, I mean they really did a good job with the like the the look and the feel of it. A lot of like like handwriting kind of stuff. And then some real some great classic Space Marines art from various editions of the game. But what this goes through so, you know, history, what are space marines, what are their basic, their basic stuff. Oh, no, is this, hold on, I'm going to keep it off before, hold, a big book like this up close might, uh, might jack up my color settings even more, but then, like, it shows you how a space marine chapter is divided up, companies, you know, what each company does, what's in each company. So here are what all the shoulder pads look like if you're gonna do if you're gonna go through companies in your army and have all the different ones. And yes, some people do all of this and they have their army divided up into companies and they build full companies, which can be a lot of models. Companies, banners. So essentially it gives you all of the information you would need to um to make your army as like accurate as possible. Now, yes, you will notice this is all blue. It is all ultramarines. But you can go off. Of, you can use this as a basis for you know whatever army that you uh, wanted. And different types of squads. So the pre. So these are just regular tactical marines. These are assault marines, uh, devastator squad, and again, just showing you where all of the. Terminators, where all of the colors and all of the notations would go. Okay, so badge variants, because even within the Ultramarines, you can have different things. More badge variants. And then they do give you some examples of other chapters. So yeah, like anything you could possibly want to know about how things look like on Space Marines, particularly Ultramarines, but some other stuff too. Uh, what banners should look like on their backs chaplains apothecaries and chaplains are always in black but their specific chapter will colors will show up on the shoulder pad same thing with apothecaries in white but this shoulder pad typically white at least not always though because there's always some exceptions uh, librarians are typically blue tech marines are typically red 
So yeah, and then and then where to put markings on vehicles. So it's a really cool book. Lots of great old art, and then they do give you. There's a a pittance of things for other chapters other than the Ultramoons. Hey, there are the Hawk Lords. Yeah, these quartered marines are just so crazy. Ooh, the Warmongers. Hideous colors. Cool name. Right, no, don't we all have entire battle companies worth of marines at home? Oh, there's another. Same, pretty much same colors as the other one, but these are the Imperial Stars. Emperor's Hawks, also kind of similar, a little bit more reddish. There, <laughs> there are other chapters, sometimes. And then, yeah, just like, here are some other symbols you might use for your armies. So, yeah, it's a cool book, uh, even if you're not an Ultramarines player, which obviously I am not. But I do find that book really interesting to look at and come up with ideas for things. And what do I want to do? What do I want to put where? Because, again, some chapters, like, so here you can see on the, there's the, the company, you can have company uh, symbols and numbers, you can have squad symbols and numbers, or you can put some of those things on knee pads. Like there are all different things you can do with, with the, um, the heraldry and the markings. So go nuts. All right, let's open up something, try to build some models. Oh, that was the other thing. Uh, we even had, as busy as yesterday was, um, we even did a little bit of a hobby night with some friends via Zoom, which was nice. And I finished the purple armor on my Blood Bowl Orcs team. If you remember that I, my long, long-suffering Blood Bowl team that I've been working on forever. Sometimes on stream. But yeah, so those are all the armor is done. Well, the purple armor. There's there's still other stuff to be done with other colors. And one day I'll return to those on stream, hopefully when mainly when I have sleep. It's hard to paint when I'm really tired. Oh yeah, man! And I gotta learn this new, gotta learn new blood bowl now. Uh, so this is something I talked a little bit about on Tuesday. The AMT Star Trek Ships of the Line models. Mommy. Oh my so yeah, these are snapped together. They're very simple. You do not need glue. You do not need paint. Uh, you can upgrade things if you would like. Easy snap fit. No glue or paint required. Um... I've built the Defiant so far, so I have that one. And like I had said, it was surprisingly a little challenging to get all the pieces to line up properly. Um, I'm a little nervous again with such a, a large piece that has to fit all the way around without, without any gaps. Um, and also this was the line that unfortunately, they released these as case assortments rather than each one having its own skew. So sometimes it was really hard to say, I just want to buy this one or just want to buy this one. Um, but I did manage to get all three of the Federation ships, which is what I really wanted. Okay. Let's check it out. So you get a tray of parts. You get one of these cards. Shows the ship that you got. And then Voyager, randomly. Uh, ships of the Line is something that Star Trek uses it's a it's like a favorite name that Star Trek has. Uh, I think the most famous thing was that that when they used to do calendars. Remember when calendar stores were a thing, especially around the holidays in your local mall. They they'd take over an empty storefront or a kiosk. It'd be a calendar store. I don't know if any of those are around anymore, but. Um, Star Trek had a, a, a major line of calendars every year called Ships of the Line. And they were just really beautiful shots of, of ships. Uh, so a lot of the artwork for this stuff comes from those. Yeah, right, right, even malls, yeah. Malls were 
Those were cool. So you've got the basic parts, a little baggie with a stand and instructions. Let's check out those. Yeah, it's funny, my my children, uh, malls are one of the biggest things that, that they miss. Not so much for shopping, but we'd go to the local mall for like to you know, just to run around and play on the uh, the little play places. Okay, here we go. Oh, and there are decals. Fun. They shouldn't really need them. We'll see where they go on this model. I didn't apply any on the Defiant. I don't remember if it actually came with them. Oh, speaking of Star Trek, I am... Uh, well, I'm like 20 minutes into the latest episode of Discovery. It's very exciting. Yeah, the great toilet paper shortage. Oh. People were buying up a bunch of stuff last week and earlier this week in preparation for the election. My God. Okay. Simple one page of directions. <clears throat> Lots of different things going in different in different ways. <coughs> oh yeah, I haven't watched Mandalorian yet. That I'm gonna watch with. <clears throat> Excuse me. That I will watch with my wife, so. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll see when we have the opportunity to watch something together. Uh, I don't think we talked about Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1. It was interesting. Okay, to begin, trap Part 5 between Part 7 and 8. Do the same with parts 6, 9, and 10. Next, assemble part 1 and 2 and continue assembling as shown. Okay, so i got to actually pay attention to what parts are which. we got some itty-bitty ones in here. So just like I talked about with lower decks for Star Trek, um, if I'm a fan of a franchise... Oh, yeah, Arsenal Royal. Eagle Moss, Eagle Moss does a lot of advertising on social media. A lot of Facebook ads, too. Oh, and those goofballs. Sometimes they'll put up an ad with, a, like, a coupon code, and then you'll go to the website, and the coupon code won't work, and it's not always, uh, <laughs> it's not always put together quite well. Um, yeah, so, like, with Lower Decks, if I like a property, like Star Trek... I'm not worried about lo having to love every last thing they do and they make. It was Star Wars. I'll admit, I'm not the biggest fan of The Mandalorian. It's okay. Um, it's okay. I love Baby Yoda. I think Baby Yoda is by far the best part of the show. I think it's... They go in a, into a lot of minutia. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's basically, it's like the prequels, right? It's constantly revealing things that we didn't need to be revealed and bringing back characters that we didn't necessarily need to bring back. Uh, it's, it's absolutely freaking insane. It drives me crazy that they spend so much time on Tatooine. Why Tatooine is the center of the freaking universe in everything is just baffling. But um, but it's fine, and I'm glad people like it because again, that means more Star Wars altogether, especially more toys and everything else. So I'm happy that it's popular, but eh, I don't I don't super love it. I find it kind of boring. I fell asleep a little bit during episode one, season two. Okay, trap part five between seven and eight. So these are going to be the cells, and the parts that you trap in between are the um, the the struts whatever you call it, to attach to the main hall. It's like New York and Marvel Comics. Right, everything takes place on Tatooine. It's like, yeah, it's the Space Marines. There's no, it doesn't make any sense that everything is on Tatooine. Okay, I need parts seven and eight. So basically we have a inside and outside of the nacelles. But again, that's what happens when you're dealing with 
big continuities, big properties, and prequels is like inevitably the universe feels so small because they keep meeting the same characters in the same places over and over again to get to get those nostalgia hits, you know, to remind you of all the things that you've seen before. Okay. So I'm going to trap the pieces. But where? Here's the other thing. The directions on these are not always the best. Hold on, let me get the... Oh, yeah, those old... Okay, it goes all the way up in the... F hmm. So there's no place for it to attach. Maybe on the other side. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, it sort of floats, but there's a little slot here for it. Oh, my God, yeah, those old GW instructions where it's just an exploded view of the parts and then... Good luck figuring out in which order to put them together. Love those. Okay, and the, again, these are snap fit. So you line up, they have little tiny pegs and holes. And in theory, you squeeze them together and they work. All right, we have one nacelle. Trash. Yeah, I don't I don't miss those those old instructions. Make sure I get the nacelles on the right way. But yeah, so far I like season three of Discovery. So that's good. Oh, butterfingers. <laughs> I do quite like this ship, the Reliant. Zardoz, you have that great picture. It's your, uh, your Dark Angels army, and you can see how the Cyclone missile launchers have changed over the years, and they keep getting bigger. Right? Was it Rabbit Wombat? Was that your comment on the on that tweet? All right, so we have nacelles, their little hull attachment points, and some phasers up on top. Okay, so we did, we did those, and then it says assemble parts one and two. I think that's going to be the the biggies here, and then do the rest. All right, that's kind of cool. So they printed all of the. Um, copyright information on the inside so once you put it together you're not going to have any unsightly stuff on the outside so you can see this model is from 2015 yeah CBS now owns all the Star Trek stuff round two is the company that owns AMT which is kind of a pain in the ass sometimes to try to figure out where to get things and then of course it was made in China Right. Line up all of our pegs and holes. And squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Yeah, I mean, come on. Wrath of Khan, great movie. No, <laughs> I didn't realize you would customize some of your missile launchers. Well, then that makes sense. I made. What did I use? Oh no, no, I took the. Um, I took the Typhoon missile launchers and made them into, uh, the Icarus, missile pod for my, 
my easy to build Redemptor Dreadnought. So I I use yeah I I repurpose that missile launcher as well. All right. So again, the only issue with things like this is especially for these big piece. The connection points were like here and then a couple over here. So from the front, it looks pretty good from the front. I know it's hard to see, but like there's a little bit of a gap here on the side and a little bit on the side. And there's really, there's no way to fix that without gluing it. Yeah, there's just, there's a, like a hairline. See that? Like, it shouldn't be like that. It should be completely flush. But what are you going to do on a cheap snap fit model? It's not going to go together perfectly. Okay. Uh, all right. So we have our, all right, let's build the roll bar as they call it. Oh, that's the back. This is the top. All right, which should we do first? Let's do the back. So as with a lot of ships, the back has shuttle bays. Oh my goodness, I'm just gonna bash that camera. So there's shuttle bay number one and shuttle bay number two. And they're teeny tiny decals already on those that's cool all right and then basically just put the rest of it together so the nacelles fit in on the sides and then you attach the roll bar across the top to those nacelles <laughs> keep account of how many times i hit the camera Oh, I see. It fits right there. Hold on, I gotta do, I gotta do this off screen so I can hold it really carefully. And hmm. Okay, well, it all fits together, which is good, but it's a little flimsy. But all right, I dig it. So where are you supposed to put these stickers? Not that I'm going to do it, but... I am very confused. The stickers, like, there's... Oh, I see. It goes... Oh, interesting. So the stickers are these really thin strips, and they want you to put it along the rim. Yeah, there's no, no way in hell I'm going to attempt that, to get a wonky uh, sticker to go along that rim and be straight all the way around. Uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope not going to matter in my display <clears throat> at all no thank you that's funny okay yeah so the reliant is a miranda class starship and what's really interesting about this design in particular is uh i forget what is it a, I, I i think i read one thing that described it once as a frigate i don't know but um Throughout Star Trek, we've seen a million different variations on this hull, which is kind of cool. With Sometimes you'll have this ship without the bar across at all, like the Saratoga that um, Benjamin Sisko was once on. Uh, later on, we've seen the Soyuz, which is this design, but with a bunch of extra little bits they added to look, look cool, mainly. Um, just a bunch of different things. And then in later generations they've sort of taken this 
ship this general scheme and then updated it with with um, you know more advanced parts from other uh, eras, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I liked it. It was really cool when you first saw this in Star Trek because this was the first, really the first main Federation ship we saw with a different, with the nacelles below the saucer instead of above. And it was like, oh wow, that's that's cool. You can do that. You're allowed to do that. You see, it's decently bigger than the Defiant. All right, I will keep this around in case I ever want to do anything with it later. But I can get rid of all of this. Okay. All right, should we do an Enterprise? Stardust Building Terrain, nice. So yeah, while the Reliance is obviously from Star Trek II, the movie, this Enterprise is original TV series Enterprise. Uh, if you're not familiar with the intricacies of every different version of the Enterprise, that's fine. I can I can talk about that one day. Uh, yeah, exactly. Nebula is a yeah a, a direct descendant of of the Reliant, especially with the swappable mission pod on the top. I don't know what I have. Like I said, unfortunately, my main Star Trek ship display case is uh, inaccessible at the moment. So, otherwise, I'd go and grab more stuff to compa compare and contrast. But I can't really do that right now. Let's get out all our parts. Let's get out our card. So we've got a nice glamour shot CG of the Enterprise. And then, <clears throat> so I guess in theory these might, these connect somehow? Doesn't look like. I don't know. I know this shot though, I know this image. For, yeah, like I said, from one of the, the uh, Ships of the Line calendars. Okay, we have split the cells again. Engineering Hall is just one piece, which is nice. The caps for the front and back of the nacelles. <laughs> and then the saucer section. What are we missing here? Wait, are we? Oh, I see, I see. Okay, no, no, it's not front and back. It's the front of the nacelles, and then the deflector and the. Wait, what is? What am I? Yeah, two part for the deflector dish. Got it. Figured it out. A little slow this morning. Uh, the very front of a. Federation Starship Warp Nacelle is called the Bussard Collector, and it collects trace gases as the ship moves through space to help power the reactions of the engine. So if you didn't know that, then maybe you learned something new today. <coughs> all right, let's get all the parts ready. And they yes, they have weaponized that in some cases, uh, notably in... Star Trek Insurrection, the Riker Maneuver. I'm a big Star Trek nerd. <laughs> Buzzard Collectors, that works too. 
Okay. To begin, trap parts seven between <coughs> between parts three and four. Oh, interesting. So here, sometimes you'll see this in a, especially in simple models, is they'll give you all these instructions and they'll tell you something dire, like you have to do this first. And then you look at your parts and I'm like, well, wait, I don't see that. And they've already done it. They already did it for you. And again, that happens with these, especially kits that are more for younger people or made to be an easy kit. It seems like sometime, some at some point in the manufacturing process and the packaging process, they realize we don't want people to screw this up. We're just going to do it for them. Even though the instructions were printed that still says you have to do it yourself. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's get our saucer. Together. Yeah, so again, on this one, like it just has the tiniest little bumps. They're not even pegs. They're just bumps and then itty-bitty holes. So hopefully it will stay together. Lining these up is fun. Yeah, so again, not bad, but there's a little bit of a crack. It doesn't really fit totally snugly. <coughs> it's got old school navigational lights. So you've got the red, red on port side, green on the starboard side, which is interesting. Build some of the cells. Um, let's see, how do these go together? Nope, not that way. <laughs> uh oh. What happened here? <gasps> oh no. Oh no, I think they messed up. What? Shoot. All right, so I was I was trying to figure out, okay, we've got, so this nacelle is clearly the starboard nacelle, and this is the port nacelle. You can tell by the direction of the registry markings on it, right? So this is gonna be on this side of the ship, and then the other side is going to be this one. And I was trying to figure out, well, okay, if I know these are the outsides, which piece goes on the inside? And then I noticed that, aha, these are different because this one has pegs and this one has holes, so they have to go with the part that has the opposite. So here's one that has pegs, so that's straightforward. Okay, so we have a nacelle. Doesn't even actually fit together very well. So we have a port nacelle. But guess what? Starboard nacelle, the outer side has pegs. And sadly, they gave me a second part for a port nacelle instead of a starboard nacelle. And pegs don't go into pegs, so I cannot complete this model. Boo! That's a bummer. They screwed it up. Well, I guess I can't recommend this model very well. No, can I? Hmm. I wonder if this is a known error in the kit. Well, so much for me building two ships today. Wow.
I don't remember exactly where I got this model. One of these I bought at a local hobby store. One of them I got on eBay. And one of them I got on Amazon. Um, sadly, they were all... All of these were purchased many years ago, so I don't think I can really go back and try to get my money back or anything. But uh, I guess it is what it is. That's sad. What I'll do sometime off screen is I'll try to I'll try to shave down the pegs in the incorrect part and see if I can at least attach it. It's not going to look right up close. But if it'll just fit on there, you know, you'd have to look really closely to notice that the inner part of the nacelle is not right. So at least I might be able to get it working to some degree. But that is, uh, that is pretty annoying. Oh. What are you going to do? Sometimes... The parts are not right. It's not your fault. It's the manufacturer. The deflector dish is a very tiny... Oh, there we go. Fix that up. Hmm. That's sad. I could do it battle damage... Essentially, it's going to look like this, but yeah, I'm going to have to do some work to essentially kit bash that nacelle together. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not a terrible model, especially for the price and how quick it is to put together. But uh, it definitely hurts it when you can't actually put it together. I really do appreciate how much, how well they did the the graphics on on these so you don't have to do all the stickers yourself always a good thing in my book so here are well enterprise mostly completed along with the reliance and the defiant so now well, partial success but not complete unfortunately what what are you going to do? Wait for me. Wait for me. That'll teach me to wait five years to open <laughs> a package and then not have any recourse to uh, to get something fixed or replaced. Oh, well. Let's see. What else? What else? Let's do some pirates. Haven't done these in a while. So this is the Frozen North set. I'm hoping I get more of the cool Viking ships. I don't have too many of those. It says, Shiver your timbers! Pirates of the Frozen North invites you to navigate past perilous icebergs, captain fantastical longboats, and dominate wintry seas with frost-bearded Vikings. Bundle up and set sail with the Pirates of the Frozen North constructible strategy game. Each game pack contains two ships, one crew or treasure card, an iceberg island card, game rules, and a die. Oh, it's always nice to look at something made by an American company where one die is a die, not a dice, as the British call it, which bugs me to no end. So I've talked about these before. This is the Pirates game, tabletop game, made by WizKids, maker of Heroclix. Uh, this game was in production for an, a few years. They came out with geez, six, seven, eight expansions of these. They were It was pretty popular for a while. Very fun. Some interesting things, especially because every game pack was a full game. You could play, not necessarily balanced, but essentially if you just bought one pack, you and a person, a friend, a family member, you could play the game. Came with these amazing little tiny dice that I just love. I have a huge collection of these. 
Uh, they're not good for actually rolling and playing like the game, but these are great for tokens and counters. Bert also has a ton of these. We would use them in our, our uh, Warhammer games. But yeah, every pack... I mean, I can't imagine... It's not something that people would do these days, but... Um, yeah, so every pack has the full rules checklist instructions updates because each obviously each expansion added new rules and things and then they kept adding more more ships and more directions on how to build all the ships and then uh yeah so really good directions on how to do everything and again everything that you need to play is right there in the pack. And of course, you can mix and match. And then once you have multiple sets, then you can actually start getting uh, balance in your teams. Because yes, well, so essentially each each pack comes with terrain, which you need. You have to play a game with either an island or one of the other variant versions in the middle. Um that's where the treasure is because the game is either get the most treasure or defeat your enemy. Here are the treasure tokens. So the treasure tokens go in there and you basically you sail up, you get, you grab treasure tokens and then later on you reveal to see how much they're worth versus the other player. Uh, there's always a bonus little crew member here that you can add to your ship in some way. And then you have two vessels or monsters depending on the expansion. So what did we what did we pull in this one? We have the Spanish La Iberia. I do not speak Spanish, so I'm sure I butchered the pronunciation of that one. It is a two mast ship with four cargo capacity. Its movement is one slow. Again, another cool thing is that on the back, these are your rulers for the game. So this ship can only move one of these slow sides. It has two cannons that go along with its masts, and they're both um, red range, <laughs> and they hit on two or better. So again, like it gives you all the information you need. And then it also has a special ability. Once per turn, the ship may look at one face-down cargo on any ship, which is pretty neat. So you could get a sense of who has what treasure if you want to attack it. So again, there are points listed. So this is a seven point vessel. The other vessel in this pack. Ooh. Oh, no, it's the USS Jackson. All right. So this ship is 14 points. So it's literally twice as well, powerful, whatever, as this one. So again, if you just bought one pack, one person would be playing the Iberia. The other one would be playing the Jackson. Is that a balanced game? Clearly not. But, um, yeah, and no Viking ship, which is a bummer. But uh, I have more of these to open at some point. But again, then obviously once you have more ships in your collection, you can match up the points and build, you know, obviously you would build two ships at least to go up against the Jackson. So the Jackson is made up of three cards. It's a four-mast ship. Can carry the same amount of treasure, though, with four. It's a slow plus slow movement. And then, yes, it has four cannons. All of them hit on threes. Three short range ones, one long range. As part of a move action, the ship may initiate a boarding party against a ship of up to short distance away from her without having to ram. That's cool. And then you build it. Yeah, it was frustrating to say the least, that in this really cool Frozen North expansion with these really cool Viking ships, that not every pack <laughs> comes with a Viking ship. You could potentially pull two Viking ships in one pack. Potentially, but uh, at least in my case, that doesn't doesn't very doesn't happen very often. So these are Typically pretty simple. Just scratch off any little get, get wrecked Vikings. So it's a matter of 
sliding protrusions through slots and then some bend in to lock things in. Uh-oh. T what is what is TT combat terrain? Which one is that one? There's so much terrain out there, which is typically a good thing, but yeah, not all of not all the terrain is TT combat terrain. What is TT combat terrain? Oh, that's it's just TT, okay. I hear good things about a lot of that MDF terrain stuff, but yeah, I, I imagine that there's a range of quality out there. Now these are... They're easy enough to bend, but they are breakable. So you want to be really careful when you have to bend these parts. There we go. They will also warp a little bit when you apply force. So, just trying to line it up. Oh, ta oh tabletop combat. Interesting. I, I don't know that one offhand. So, we got a little itty bitty Spanish ship here. Very simple. It has one tall mast in the front. And sometimes you just got to work them in. And a little mast in the back. And then you add the flag to the rear of the vessel. And then a pennant on the top. And I love how they give you multiple versions depending on what you want the colors to look like. Let's go with red, orange, red. Oh, yeah, cool. Send me the link. Link, link, link. And there you have the La Iberia. An intrepid seven-point vessel. So you do need to keep this card that has your special rules, all the information, and your rulers. The secondary card, secondary cards, plural, you do not need. Unless you are a hardcore collector and you need to keep track of your collector numbers, which is on the second card, but who cares. Again, they also, it also includes a checklist, so you can look up the name anyway. Well, let's see, so the Frozen North has... Just a massive amount of things. It looks like as far as just ships go, there are 85 ships. Wow. That's a lot. And then treasure and cap treasure and crew cards. <laughs> a lot of generic ones. And then some like super unique rare things. That's a lot of ships. So the yeah, <clears throat> the Viking ships are the Beowulf, the Wiglaf, Hrunting, Naglin, Huggin, Munin, Asgard, Hrothgar, Grendel, Woden, Donar, Freya, Fenrir, Sleipnir, Loki, Valkyrie, Ragnarok, Hid Hlidskjalf, Yggdrasil, and then some crew. Many of those names you should remember. From our discussion of the prose Edda and reading Beowulf. Uh, I will not quiz you on them all right now, but I expect that at least some of those should have been brought to mind things that we read about. All right, so the Jackson is a bigger, much more complicated ship. Uh, oh, no, actually, it's not that much more complicated. It does have this interesting pattern to the masts where they sort of overlap each other going down the hull, which sometimes can be a little bit challenging for the build. But with the help of all of you watching at home, I'm sure I'll be able to do it. The Daniel Jackson. <laughs> hey, it could be, with all their time-traveling shenanigans. The finales, the, the movies for SG-1, those, those, those were bad, right? I know they tried, but I don't I don't remember them being good. Although it 
I don't really remember them very much. All right, so similar to the Iberia, you're gonna bend the sides of the hull, build the, or the, the keel, I guess. I don't know, I don't know all of my naval ship parts. What's the keel? Is it the bottom? Where's Rob Vegas? All right, so we have the basic shape of the boat. Now again, so there are three masts that run down the center, and but then you might say, "Hey, well, how do these fit together? They're they're so close together." But if you look really closely, you'll see that if you drew a line down the center, the front and rear are a little bit offset to the left, and the one in the middle is a little bit offset to the right. So that's so again, they they overlap each other to run down the length of the ship which sometimes can be a little bit of a challenge in getting them all in there. But like I said, we'll manage. I have lots of practice doing these. Yeah, Airdance, that was a, that was a neat aspect to the show. I always wanted more with the replicators. I thought those were cool. So again, the trick is to do these without bending anything so far that it breaks. I have broken a few of these over the years. It's very sad. They're not easy to fix. Oh, wait a minute. Directions. Oh, the big one goes in the back. Okay. Good to know. Two masts down, one to go. All right, it worked. Is that right? The big one goes in the back? Hmm, I guess so. And then it has one more in the front. And then again, little tiny flag that goes in the back. And because of the orientation of these sails, you do not have a little banner that goes up on the top. But who needs it? <coughs> America versus Spain. A little bit of a size difference there. <laughs> Oh, Aaron, you are absolutely correct. I should be using the uh, fore, aft, port, starboard. All of those fun terms. So yeah, again, these are... I, I love these ships just as little display pieces. They look really good. Some of the really complex ones are a challenge to build, but once you have them built, then it's like... Then it's, it's amazing that you're like, wait, I built all those out of flat pieces from these things? So yeah, it's pretty cool. And the game, the game is fun. It's it's simple. You can play a game in a pretty short amount of time, which is neat. Not all games are like that. Cool. Well, we built hmm. We built one and three quarter Star Trek models and a couple of ships. Talked about some other neat stuff. What? What else is going on? So later on tonight, tune into the Ripley Improv Channel for Heartbeats. Are we at the end of the season almost, right? Almost. Ooh, I need tiny dice for Battletech. Okay. Well, like I said, I have a lot of these. It's like an obscene amount of these. Because, yeah, as Zarno has mentioned, not only did WizKids do these pirate ships but they also did a, an expansive line 
of these for Star Wars called Star Wars Pocket Models, which were really, really cool as well. Building all of these, all the cool Star Wars ships out of this material. Uh, yeah, so the Heartbeat Show tonight with Jessica Lynn Verdi. Speaking of, <clears throat> excuse me, she is my co-host for my for our new Saturday Warhammer show, The War Room, which returns tomorrow, episode two. Got some really fun stuff to talk about, some new releases, new announcements. We're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the squats which I'm sure I know some of you are familiar with, but I'm sure quite a few of the people who are going to be tuning in will have no idea what those are. Uh, I got the idea to do that as a little lore feature, uh, watching Jessica play Deep Rock Galactic, which you could sort of view as a, uh, a game possibly inspired by something out of the Warhammer 40k universe. There's no such thing as squats. There are so many references to squats over the years. It's so funny. Even recent ones. But we're going to save that and talk about it tomorrow. And I'll get Jessica's opinion on my color scheme talks. Jessica, as you know, is a is a painter. She's a, a, a very impressive artist. So she might have some cool insights there. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be it'll be neat. I promise. So that'll be two o'clock Pacific Standard Time tomorrow on Saturday. That's our usual time. And then tomorrow night oh yes, and then tomorrow night is the Home Buddies group stream. And uh boy, I confess I do not know who or what it's gonna be tomorrow. This week has been bonkers. I apologize for not knowing, but there it is. Oh, and then uh, first announcement, you'll, you're going to hear it first now, and then we'll have the actual announcement on the discord. Uh, are any of you who are watching or listening, not in the home buddies discord yet? I kind of imagine you all are, but here's the new announcement. Um, I thought it would be neat as our little home buddies community. If we did a secret Santa gift exchange so we'll have the how to sign up what the the you know the rules are very simple very straightforward but if you'd like to get in on that we'll pair up people in the home videos community so you might get um, one of the other people who are watching uh, you might get me you might get one of the other home buddies and uh, yeah we'll do a little send send along a gift exchange which are always fun uh, I love and I I don't celebrate Christmas, but I don't mind calling them secret Santas. Uh, I love them. I always love sending things to people. It's Giving gifts is definitely part of my love language, so uh, I'm all about it. So yeah, so we'll be doing that in case anybody wants to join. And it's like $20, you know, it doesn't have to be something extravagant. Um, lots of you are very creative people, so you know if you wanted to make or paint something for somebody, that would be cool too. But um, like I said, we'll have the full information about that very soon. We're we're closing in on having that, all of that finalized. All right, let's see who else is online right now to pass it over to. Got some artists, some chatters. Some, uh, a lot of coming soons. Who is actually on? It's not really, not really much going on. Yeah, I don't want to. F- mm, no. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to raid today. I am just going to free you all to enjoy the rest of your Friday, and however you want. Oh wow! At the one minute or one hour five minute marks. Nightbot just goes nuts and does all the all the messages, apparently. Oh, but no, I triggered one of them. Like I said, I'm tired. Uh, it was a long night last night. Everybody, if I don't see you later in chat for Ripley tonight, home uh, heartbeats, 
if I don't see you tomorrow for the War Room or for the Home Buddies group stream, have a great weekend. I'm confident that eventually things are going to go in the right direction for our country if you're living here in the United States. Uh, hopefully, if you're living in other countries, you look at what's going on here and have some hope, too, for the rest of the world. Hey, Pandar. Um, but yeah, I just want to I want to spread out some positivity out there and and let's hope for the best. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Hopefully I'll see you on some of those other streams and uh, be be good. I don't, say hi to somebody. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go take a nap. It's only a matter of time. Yes. Good. Good. Okay. Bye, everybody.